before you met Bob Marley, um, you're back in New York City and you're with the legendary Jim Capaldi from, from Traffic, incredibly talented um, artist, musician, a real, you know, in many ways, a, a futuristic type of artist. Um, and I understand that that's the first time you encountered Bob Marley before you moved uh, to Jamaica. Uh, it's such an interesting story to me. Can you walk through that for a second? You know, I have become friends with Jim through um, meeting a Jamaican actress who was living in London called Esther Anderson. And I have become friends with Jim and his group Traffic was playing some shows in New York. At the time, they were a huge, uh, hugely popular group selling out arenas around the world. And after one of his shows in New York, I went to visit him at his hotel. And this is just Jamaican guy there. And they had a cassette of his new album. The guy was Bob Marley. And the new album was the first album that his group, The Whalers, um, recorded for Island Records. It was still on, hadn't been released yet. And when they put it on the, on the boom box, I, I was just kind of blown away how amazing it was. It felt like this could be something that would have a, a tremendous cultural, and political, and social impact um, for a couple of reasons. For instance, Caetano Veloso and Gilberto Gil, as great as they were and as important as they were in Brazil, they were singing in a, in a foreign language. That, I mean, they were singing in Port, uh, Portuguese, and it's not a language that a lot of people uh, are fluent in. Admittedly and embarrassingly, I love Caetano Veloso's music, and I don't understand that i didn't realize that it had this revolutionary undertone that you're describing well yeah i mean it's like the bob dylan of, of of brazil yeah beautiful beautiful music you know you might say he caetano was like the bob dylan and Gio was like the marvin gay <laughs> i mean kind of incredible i mean here were these jamaican guys they singing in english and I knew they had like this, the perfect a record company, which was owned by and started by a Jamaican, Chris Blackwell, and was on the one hand producing, distributing music that was greatly popular, um, Traffic, uh, Joe Cocker, um, Cat Stevens was selling millions of records. And they were also putting out records, critically acclaimed uh, artists that didn't, wouldn't necessarily um, have a, uh, a lot of commercial appeal, like Nick Drake and Sandy Denny, John Martin. And they were supporting those artists um, by being able to also um, have success, commercial success with these other artists. I mean, for me at that time, Island Records was a very unique uh, record company in that regard. And I felt, well, because they were on this record label, that this music really, as innovative as it was, had a chance to really reach a, 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 a huge audience. I understand that um, the uh, relationship that began between Bob Marley and Blackwell was really interesting. At the time, Blackwell loaned them the equivalent of like 4,000 pounds UK at the time. And people assumed that um, Marley and the Whalers took advantage of him. But in fact, it was the opposite. They felt really 
Um, they need to do the right thing. And, and there was like no contract. There was no written contract. It was just, it was a handshake type of a deal. And uh, Blackwell was like trustful and, and uh, you know, obviously rightfully so. Uh, apparently Marley and the Whalers went into the studio and worked hard for like many, many days and created some of the best music ever. Um, it's interesting how the world has changed because I don't think today um, either the record producer or the record production company or the artist would ever do anything like that on a handshake, you know, different world. Well, Chris told me the story of how he came to sign the Whalers. They, um, he, he had been involved in producing the movie, the, the harder they come. Yeah. Um, directed by a Jamaican, Perry Hensel, it starred Jimmy Cliff, who was, um, on Island records. And, Island helped to finance the movie because they saw it as a star vehicle for Jimmy Cliff. And Island Records had started before they had commercial success. It, it started with Chris licensing uh, Jamaican singles um, for distribution in the UK. And then he had a, this huge pop hit with a 15-year-old Jamaican um, Millie Small, and that sort of pushed them into this pop world. Yeah, I think that Millie Small record sold, I read that it sold 6 million copies, huh? It's crazy. That was the number one worldwide hit. Yeah. And then Island was off and running. But at the time, Chris explained to me that uh, when they, he wanted to, find a, a, a bigger audience for Jamaican music. And at the time when he signed Jimmy Cliff, he felt that Island needed to focus on breaking one artist and didn't have the resources to promote more than one artist and, and get them into the huge kind of marketplace. And the production of the movie, The Harder They Come, had dragged on a lot longer than they thought it was going to. And Jimmy Cliff's contract was coming up with Island. And Chris had assumed that he was going to re-sign him because the movie was nearing completion. And Jimmy Cliff turned around and signed with a and huh. And Chris explained to me that the week that that happened, he got a call from somebody saying that the Whalers were in London and would he take a meeting with them? And he, to he told me that if Jimmy Cliff hadn't left the label that week, he wouldn't have taken the meeting. And he told me that when they walked in, into his office, that the three of them, they were so charismatic that he just said to them, what, what do you need to make an album? And they told him a sum of money and he just gave it to them. And his, he told me his staff thought, you know, oh, you're never going to see the money. Right. Rasta guys, blah, blah, blah. And that's how the first album, Catch a Fire, came about. And then I, I got to hear it bef before it was released. And I, I just I just knew it was going to be that these guys, that this was an incredible work of art and had this tremendous social, political importance. And they had the right record label. And I just knew this was going to be the biggest thing. Yeah. 